And the second piece of the puzzle to understand magnitudes and brightness of stars, stars is the term absolute magnitude. Now notice we use the, the capital letter M to indicate absolute magnitude, small m, for apparent magnitude. So what's the difference? Well here it says it all. Absolute magnitude is equal to the apparent magnitude if the star was at a distance of 10 parsecs, which is 32.6 light years. Hmm, what does that mean? If you want to know what the absolute magnitude of a star is, you would take the star, whichever star it is, and place it at a distance of 10 parsecs away from the Earth, and then see what would the apparent brightness be of that star. That is then the absolute magnitude of a star. For example, our Sun, because it's so close to us, has an, has an apparent magnitude of minus 26.7. The absolute magnitude is 4.83. So that means if we took our Sun, which is very close to us, and we then moved it 10 parsecs away, or 32.6 light years away, it would appear to us to have a magnitude of 4.83, which is pretty dim, remember, plus 6 was the limit of our ability to see a star with the naked eye, so it would be a very, very, very dim star, way out there, barely visible. Wow! So the Sun isn't that particularly of a bright star. Most stars, however, are less, are less bright than the Sun, so they have absolute magnitudes of even greater numbers, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7, plus 8, plus 9. So you can see that the vast majority of stars, if they were placed at a distance of 10 parsecs away, or 32.6 light years, would not be visible to us to the naked eye. That's why when we look out to the sky at night, we could only see about 3,000 stars. That's not because those 3,000 stars have a magnitude of less than 6. It's just that they're close enough to us so that we can see them, or they're so bright that even though they're so far away, we can still see them. So, stars like the Sun can only be seen to maybe a distance of maybe 11, 12 or so parsecs away, and at that point you probably wouldn't be able to see them anymore. Now, to give a, also another picture, another view of this, let's say that we have a relatively bright star in the sky. Now, we don't know, of course, that it's bright because it's a really big star, or it's bright because it's close. Now, obviously, from this picture, you can see that it's, that it's closer to us than 10 parsecs. Now, what would happen if we take that star and we move it farther away? Well, that the apparent brightness would, of course, diminish. Whatever the apparent brightness is, when we die, by the time we reach a distance of 10 parsecs, that then becomes the absolute brightness of that star. Let's say we look at another star, a really big star, but it's really far away. Now, of course, we wouldn't know that it's far away, but it would appear, it, it appears to us, uh, and maybe I should draw a circle around that. See, this is the apparent brightness because it's so far away. Now, what would that star look like when we bring it to a distance of 10 parsecs? Would it look like this? Oh, no, of course not. It would look, it would look a whole lot brighter than that. By the time we bring it to a distance of 10 parsecs, it probably looks like this. It would look enormously bright. And so there are some stars that are like that. For example, uh, notice the star Antares. Antares is quite far away. It's still a fairly bright star in the sky. It's the brightest star in the constellation Scorpio. But notice if we were to take the star and we move it closer to us to a distance of 10 parsecs, it would have a magnitude of minus 5. It would look brighter than Venus in the sky. It would be absolutely enormous. And then as a final comparison, take a look at what, how bright a supernova is, a type 1a supernova. You may not know yet what a type 1a supernova is, it's actually a white dwarf that explodes, but um, uh, we'll get into that in a later video. But notice the brightness of one of those explosions. When a star explodes in a supernova explosion, at that time it has an absolute magnitude of minus 19. Now of course, most supernova explosions, they're really far away. But imagine if one happened at a distance of 10 parsecs. If a supernova explosion were to happen at 32.6 light years, a distance where if our sun was there only would have a brightness of 4.83, barely visible, it would have a magnitude of minus 19. Remember, our sun has a magnitude of minus 26, so it would have a brightness between the full moon and the sun. Actually, if a supernova went off that close to the Earth, only 10 parsecs away, at night, you could probably read your newspaper from the light emanated from the supernova explosion. Just to get a feel of how bright a supernova explosion is, let's measure the difference in brightness or luminosity between the Sun at 10 parsecs and a type 1a supernova. And let's also compare, for example, the brightness of the Sun 
to the star Sirius. Sirius is a bright star, the brightest star in the sky that is in the constellation Canis Major. All right, let's first compare the Sun to Sirius. So the Sun and Sirius, and that's the beauty behind what we call the absolute magnitude because then you can actually compare the actual brightness between two stars. Not the way they appear to us, but the way they actually are. So if the Sun has a magnitude of plus 4.83 and Sirius has a magnitude of plus 1.47, let's call that the brightness of uh, Sirius and the brightness of the Sun. And now let's compare the two. So the brightness of Sirius divided by the brightness of the Sun, so that would give us the ratio of their luminosities, is equal to 2.512 raised to the difference in the magnitudes, which is 2.512 raised to the, the difference would be 4.83 minus 1.47, and so that would be equal to 2.512 raised to the, if you subtract that from that, you get 3.36, 3.36, and let's find out how much brighter Sirius is compared to the Sun. All right, so 2.512 raised to the 3.36 equals 22 times as bright. Hmm, that's interesting. So it's equal to 22, which means Sirius puts out as much light as 22 suns. Or if you were to put the Sun next to Sirius, and if you want to get the same amount of light from stars like the Sun, you would need to place 22 stars like the Sun next to Sirius to put out the same amount of light. Now let's compare a Type 1a supernova. How much light does it put out? And that will be absolutely enormous. So the, the light or the brightness of a supernova, of course we're talking about a Type 1a, divided by the brightness of the Sun, is equal to 2.512, and then of course the difference would be uh, 4.83 minus a minus 19. And so that, of course, would be 2.512 raised to the 23.83 power. And that's going to be a really big number. 2.512 raised to the 23.83 power. Wow, I need the scientific notation for this one. It would be 3.4 billion. 3.4 billion. So when a supernova explosion occurs, a Type 1a supernova explosion, it puts out as much light, as much energy, as 3.4 billion suns. That's absolutely enormous. Now that's again the beauty of the absolute magnitude. It allows you to compare two stars to one another, two galaxies to one another. As long as you know the absolute magnitude, you can actually have a good feel of how bright one is compared to the other. And then in the next several videos, I will show you how to use the apparent magnitude and the absolute magnitude to actually determine the distance of stars using the HR diagram.